Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm taking our Year 12 students of General Mathematics in Queensland and Western Australian applications through how to solve simultaneous equations using arithmetic sequences. We're going to take our general rule for an arithmetic sequence and use that with a single worded problem. And here's the problem right here. The fourth term of an arithmetic sequence is 22 and the ninth term is negative 33. What is the 26th term? of the sequence. Now this would be a really good point for you to pause and see if you can solve it all by yourself and then rejoin us to see if you got it right. So I've given you the general form of an arithmetic sequence on the screen here. This is part of your formula sheet if you're in Queensland so you don't need to memorize this. The nth term is equal to the first term plus the common difference d multiplied by the number of terms take away 1. So let's take the information from our problem and substitute that into the general form. I've got term 4 equals 22 which equals the first term plus d times 4 minus 1, which is n is 4. And second time we've got n is equal to 9. The ninth term is equal to negative 33, which is also equal to the first term plus the common difference multiplied by 9 take away 1. Now what I'm going to do here is get rid of the t4 and the t9 because that's making an equation that's a bit messy, two lots of equal signs. We don't really need it because now if we take that information We've actually just got 22 equals the equation and negative 33 equals the equation. And we can simplify that a little bit further. We've got some information in brackets. Let's take that 4 minus 1 and make that 3 and multiply it by the d. We've now got 3d and we're going to call that equation 1. And we'll do the same on the bottom as well. We've got 9 take away 1 becomes 8d and we're going to call that equation 2. Now there's two different methods that you can use to solve simultaneous equations. My preference would be to use the elimination method, simply taking equation 2 and subtracting equation 1. However, a lot of people in general maths and maths applications are not comfortable using the elimination method and make some silly mistakes. So let's use the substitution method today. So what I'm going to do is make T1 the subject of both of my equations. And this will make solving it a little bit easier. So firstly, I've got my first equation. At the moment T1 is on the same side with 3D. Let's take 3D to the other side and make T1 our subject. And we'll do the same with our second equation. At the moment on that equation we've got 8D added to T1. Let's subtract 8D from both sides. And now T1 is the subject of equation 2 as well. So what this means is if I've got something equal to T1 and something else equal to T1, then that means the something and the something else are also equal. So we can actually take T1 right out of the situation and make the left hand side of that first equation and the left hand side of the second equation equal to one another. Now the logic of that might confuse a few people. You just need to remember that if T1 is equal to let's say 100 then T1 in the other equation is also going to be equal to 100 so that means those left hand sides are also equal to 100. Just to use some real numbers. Okay so now we've got an equation in a straight line only one variable which is d and we can solve that. So we're going to solve for d. First step is we're going to bring our like terms together and we're going to add 8d to both sides. So when we've added 8d to the right hand side 8d will disappear and when we add it to the left hand side we've got 8d positive 8d take away 3d gives us positive 5d. Now we're going to subtract 22 from both sides and we end up with 5d equals negative 55. If we now divide both sides by 5, we're going to find that d's value is negative 11. We're halfway there. We've found our common difference. So now we need to substitute d equals negative 11 into either of our equations. It doesn't matter which one, equation 1 or equation 2. So I've chosen equation 1 because it's got the smaller numbers. So if I now put that inside my equation, 22 take away 3 multiplied by negative 11. Now negative times negative equals positive. So I'm going to have 22 plus 33. The first term is going to be 55. So now I've got my first term and I've got my common difference. Now all I need to do is substitute this information back into my general form of an arithmetic sequence and I'll be able to find the 26th term. Alternatively, I could stick that into my calculator and press the equals button 26 times using the iterative function kind of tedious. It's a lot easier to use algebra. So let's put in that first term 55 plus negative 11 was our common difference multiplied by the 25 and that gives us negative 220. That's our 26th term. 
Now, if you paused it, did you get the same answer as me? If so, fantastic job. Well, that's all we have time for today on McClutchy Mass. Thank you so much for joining me. Why not follow us on Facebook? McClutchy Mass is there as well. Have a lovely day.